The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. The Equitable Life Assurance Society has nearly 8,000 trained representatives from coast to coast, serving over 4 million members. Tonight, one of our Equitable Society representatives has a brief but important message on Social Security. You've probably heard about the sweeping changes just made in Social Security benefits. Another 10 million people now get this protection. And benefits to folks already covered have been greatly increased. Maybe all this leaves you a little in doubt as to just where you stand. To help you get your bearings and size up your family's changed financial outlook, the Equitable Society has revised its famous fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. In just 14 minutes, Mr. Keating will tell you more about this Equitable chart and what it can do for you. Tonight, FBI file number 294. Its subject, bank robbery. Its title... Quartet for Crime. Tonight's case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation presents the story of a gang of professional bank robbers. It is not brought to you solely for entertainment. This file was chosen in order that you might witness organized crime at work. For that is one of the most serious problems facing not only the law enforcement agencies of the country, but also facing you, the people. It is your problem as well as theirs. And if it is to be solved, you will have to supply your share of the solution. Organized crime in the United States could be greatly reduced in the very near future by one means. By the citizens of every community building organizations that are as efficient as the criminals. Later this evening, your FBI will make definite suggestions on how you can help. Tonight's file opens in a large room at police headquarters in a Midwestern city. The nightly lineup is in progress, with 11 men standing on a small floodlighted stage being questioned by an officer. How long have you been in the city? Three months. Where'd you come from? New York. How? By train. Among the gallery spectators is FBI Special Agent Tony Guthrie. And as he sits watching, Special Agent Jim Taylor slides into the next seat. Got a record there? Hello, Jim. Hiya, Tony. How you doing? Well, the one I'm looking for isn't shown yet. Anybody brought in carrying money bags from the Valley City Bank? Huh? Where were you picked up? That's the one we're working on as of ten minutes ago. Well, when were they robbed? This afternoon, three men and a woman. Of one of them picket? shot up the place. Anybody killed? No. You are Robbers got 11,000, made a clean yeah. getaway. Valley City Where'd Police come up with any eye dance? Oh, partial on one. One out of four, huh? Yeah. The other two who worked boys? inside wore masks. Yeah. Fourth drove the getaway car. Oh. Where do you live? Tony, there's a plane for Valley City in half an hour. Well, Jim, I gotta wait and see if my witness identifies a hoodlum picked up this morning. No, no, I'll go down alone. I'll call you the minute I get anything. What time is it, Doris? About six. Where's Roy? Went out to get the papers. He's still sore about how the job went? Yeah, plenty. Well, when he gets to be my age, he'll commence realizing there's good ones and there's bad ones. But the main thing still is don't get caught. That you, Roy? Yeah. Yeah, I got a lot of this. What? Story in the paper. Listen to this. Yeah. Amid wild confusion and reckless shooting, the Valley City National Bank was held up today by three men who subsequently escaped in a car driven by a woman accomplice. 
Wild confusion and reckless shooting. That's going to look nice to all of our friends, oh, isn't it? Oh, Roy, we didn't open a show. We robbed a bank. It don't matter what the papers say. Well, it does to me. When I do a job, I want to be proud of it. I knew we shouldn't have taken that guy on with us. Now, don't get all steamed. It's the first time he ever worked with you. He was nervous. Then that's why we rehearsed, Doris. Didn't I show him every move he had to make? Didn't I lay it out so he knew what his job was every minute? Roy, the headline says Valley City Bank Robbed. It don't say Roy Butler Captured. Besides, we need somebody who's a little brave. What makes you think Gene is? He's young. That's the only time anybody's brave. I got a gun when I walk in, too, but every year I get a little more scared. Why? A ball player can only make so many hits. A songwriter can only write so many songs. Then they're finished. Maybe the same thing goes for a bank robber. You're crazy, Charlie. Once you get a system in our business, you, you just keep getting better all the time. That don't settle the question. Who are you going to get to replace Gene for the next job? No need for deciding this minute, Roy. Okay, I'll think about it. If you take my advice, you'll give the boy another chance. I said I'd think about it. Oh, come on, Charlie. Where? Pick up some railroad tickets. We're all getting out of here tonight. <laughs> Special Agent Guthrie speaking. Jim Taylor, Tony. Yeah, Jim. I'm down at Valley City. This looks like one of Roy Butler's jobs. You familiar with him? Uh, no. Well, he's robbed a dozen banks last couple of years all over the country. Someone identify him? No, no, he was wearing a mask, but he vaulted the railing to the safe. That's a characteristic that's peculiar to him. Uh-huh. Well, who's in the gang beside Butler? Well, he's worked in the past with a safe cracker named Charlie York, an old Pete man. How about the other man and, and the woman? Nothing on the girl, but we can get something on the man. He leaned against the glass partition and left a good set of prints. My wire folded them onto Washington. This gang isn't going to be easy to catch up with, Tony. Butler has a definite pattern. Yeah? What's that? Well, after each job, his gang splits up and scatters. They don't meet again until Butler puts an ad in the newspaper telling them about the next job. Hey, when are you coming down here? Just as soon as I can sign out and grab a plane. Good. Pick up a few more pictures of Roy Butler and Charlie York from our files. I'll meet you at the airport. Hi, Doris. How'd you get in? Door was open. Didn't you ever hear of knocking? <laughs> I figure it's a waste of time. Where's Roy and Charlie? They went to get railroad tickets. I might add that Roy is plenty steamed with you. Yeah, what for? The way you work the job. I like to work that way. Well, I got a tip for you, Gene. Roy, don't. <laughs> Can I uh, help you pack? No, thanks. Hey, Doris. You know, we, we ain't had much chance to talk. I don't know much about you. Where are you from? Cleveland. Yeah, why'd you leave? I wanted to get out of Cleveland. Where'd you meet Roy? At a party. I <laughs> didn't know he went to any. He used to. Nothing like mileage to slow you up. Hand me that box, will you? Huh? Uh, yeah, here. You, um, like dancing? Why? Well, when we get together again, you might give me the office. I could take you out. Sonny, do you see this jewel box? It's loaded. Loaded with stuff Roy gave me. He also bought me all of those dresses and that coat. You see, I'm a grown-up girl. And I got a grown-up guy. I like it that way. I still say that I... Oh, hi, Roy. Hello, Gene. The express man show up for Charlie's trunk? No. Yeah, we better just put it on a cab. Did you get the tickets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're on the 640. Oh, they don't give me much time. Want a hand with your bags, Doris? She can handle them, Jane. You come into the other room. I want to talk to you. Sorry I'm late, Jim. We ran into some weather. Oh, that's okay, Tony. Anything happened since we talked? Come on, I'll tell you about it on the way to the car, huh? Okay. 
Washington sent me an item on that third bandit off us Prince. Good. He's a young hoodlum named Gene Crawford, which is another thing that doesn't fit. Butler's known for not working with rookies. Uh, you sure it was Roy Butler? Yeah. Police located a story rented near the bank to hold his rehearsal. Butler give the landlord any local address? Yeah, but it turned out to be a vacant lot. We have got a chance to find out where they live, though. How? Crawford's mask slipped during the robbery. Yeah? I got descriptions from enough people who were in the bank to make up a composite picture on him. Oh, great. The police showed it around and located a half a dozen saloons that he visited on the west side. The west side? Is that the residential section? Oh, it's kind of half and half, Tony. Crawford took a cab from in front of one of the saloons, and the police are helping us to try and find every driver who works on that line. I looked at Butler's record before I left. Oh? They all live in the same place when they're working. Yeah, that's right. Well, if we can find out Crawford's address, we'll be in great shape. Tony, I'll uh, drop you off at headquarters on the way, and you can re-interview those bartenders, huh? Okay, where are you going? The cab company garage and start checking their records. Bags on the seat, Porter. Turn around, baby. Gene, <laughs> how'd you get on this train? With a ticket. Roy won't like this. Roy is still back in Valley City. He won't know anything about it. He will when I tell him. But I don't think you will. Did he fire you? No. He was going to. We had a long talk. He changed his mind. We'll change it back again after this. Look, move over, honey. We're going to have a nice long time. Now, wait a minute. I think I got you pegged pretty good, baby. And I think I got your deal with Roy added up pretty good, too. Oh? The main reason you stick with him is not because you go for him that much, but because he's a winner. Hmm. You like winners. All right. I'm going to give you a chance to tie up with the new champ. Who would that be? Me. How do you win the title? By taking all the dough from the next score, giving you 50% of it. You mean Cross Roy? That's right. I'd like to hear the deal? Not especially. When we meet for the payoff after the next job, I stick up Roy, see? We grab the whole satchel, and we cut it down the middle. How does that sound to you? I'm not interested. <laughs> Honey, I know dames better than that. Well, we got three hours before the train pulls into Auburn. By the time we get there, believe me, I'll have you sold. Hello? Tony? Yeah, where are you, Jim? I'm still at the cab company office. We just found the right driver. Good. Did you learn anything? Yeah, Crawford's living at uh, 27 Lake Street. 27 Lake Street. That's right. You going over there now? I will if you can pick up the warrants. Sure. Okay, I'll meet you outside the house as quick as you can make it. Hi, Tony. Most in time. When do we make our move? Just as soon as the police get set up out in the alley. If we need it, they'll support us with tear gas. Oh, uh, not that it makes much difference Wait a minute, now. Hold it, Tony. What? There's the signal. Yeah, they're all set up out back. Come on. Right. Go ahead, Tony. It's the last apartment on the right-hand side. Okay. Well, you better get your gun ready. Yeah, I got it. Next one. Right. Here, this is him. Cover me. Go ahead, Jim. Hey. Look, it's open. Yeah. You see anybody? Wait a no. Come on, let's move in. Somebody in the next room. Come on. 
Stand where you are. Huh? What do you want? Who are you? The janitor. Where are the people who live here? The, the three men and the girl? That's right. Where are they? They moved an hour ago. <laughs> We will return in just a minute to tonight's exciting case from the official files of your FBI. Now a message on Social Security from the Equitable Life Assurance Society. On September 1st, Americans discovered that they were facing a different financial future. On that day, the revised Social Security law went into effect. Benefits went up 50 to 100 percent, and 10 million new names were added to the Social Security rolls. To help you analyze your changed financial picture, the Equitable Society has brought out a new and revised edition of its famous fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Your Equitable representative will be glad to bring you a copy of this chart. No charge. When you get this fact-finding chart, you play dead. You imagine that death has taken you before your time. Your income has stopped. But your kids still have the same appetite, the same ability to wear out shoes. How much money will your wife need to cover monthly expenses? The fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers will give you a reliable answer. With their new Social Security benefits, how many additional dollars will they need every week to be well-fed, well-housed, well-clothed until the youngest child finishes high school? In five minutes, the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers gives you an answer you can trust guides you every step of the way with simple, easy-to-understand pictures. Think what a relief not to have to worry any longer. Once you have the facts before you, you can plan intelligently. Chances are that with your present life insurance and your new Social Security benefits, only a small amount of additional life insurance will do the job. Your equitable representative will be glad to work out a sound program. The first step is to ask him for the revised fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. No charge, of course. So get in touch with your equitable representative soon. Or write care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, Quartet for Crime. The Federal Bureau of Investigation is well aware that you, as an individual citizen, cannot negate the careful plans of a gang of bank robbers. However, it does believe these criminals present you with a challenge. They rehearse their crimes. There is nothing to stop you from rehearsing crime prevention, reviewing the basic duties you have as a citizen. You can see to it, for instance, that your home is the constant scene of good, not bad example. You can see to it that you are present when community problems are being discussed. You can help keep your local police free from political domination. You can aid in making available adequate juvenile activities. You can serve on neighborhood committees. These things take work, hard work, and constant, unrelenting effort. You cannot afford to relax and hope your neighbor will serve in your stead. For the ranks of crime are constantly swelling with new recruits. It is long past time for the ranks of decency to do the same. Tonight's FBI file continues at the FBI field office. Four weeks have elapsed since the Valley City Bank robbery. Tony? Yeah? You writing a report on the Roy Butler case? No, no, Jim. Well, we'd do to hand one in, you know. Yeah. Make a pretty thing to read, too. I'll write it. Let's just go over what we've got, huh? You have all the names and dates? Yeah. We're in my notebook here. Well, that's just about the whole report. Well, let's see here. We got the ID on Crawford from the fingerprints at the bank. Uh-huh. Located the cab driver through the composite picture of Crawford. Uh-huh. Cab driver led us to the apartment. Period. Uh, janitor told us about the express man showing up too late to pick up the trunk. Interviewed the express people at the station, but they didn't remember receiving a trunk from the old man that night. You might mention there were three conventions breaking up that same evening, so the express office was jammed. Yeah, that's right. Interviewed the ticket sellers and porters. Nobody could identify the pictures of any of the men. I covered the bus station and the airport, also with no results. Yeah. And that's the report. No results. Wait a minute, Tony. There's 
It's one thing we didn't try. That's working backwards. Huh? The janitor said Charlie York took the trunk with him. So? So the reason he took the trunk with him was that the express man didn't show up in time. I I still don't get what you're driving at. Uh, we know the date that Butler and his mob arrived down there. Yeah? We've got a description of the trunk. Yeah? If we could trace it back to where it came from... Hey, hey, that might be it, Jim. I'm going back to Valley City, Tony. If I get anything, I'll call you. Get ready to travel. I found a perfect layout for us. Where? Sheridan Falls. Well, they can't have anything bigger than a piggy bank there. They do, though. The bank makes a factory payroll of 51000 every Friday. Hey. You remember the Davenport job? Davenport. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's where I went in first and tried to cash a check. Right. The setup here is exactly the same, only a little smaller, so we use those plans. We can't use the same getaway chart. I got new ones all made up here. Now, take a look at this. See, we got a main highway and two alternate routes. Oh, good. Okay, now start packing. I'll call and put in the ad. I want to start rehearsals day after tomorrow. Special Agent Guthrie speaking. Jim Taylor, Tony. Yeah, Jim, where are you? Centerville. You having any luck? I finally traced Charlie York's trunk to this place by way of five different stopovers. Uh Uh-huh. Old man's got an apartment here that I located just a little while ago. Well, one down, three to go. Uh, no, not quite, Tony. He's gone, and nobody at the express office here remembers shipping out the trunk. Oh, no, don't tell me we're stymied again. Uh, not altogether. I got a search warrant, went through the apartment. I found some copies of the Chicago Chronicle, York's a subscriber. Well, that could be the paper Roy Butler uses for his ad. Yeah, that's my guess. Tony, will you call the library and get all the back copies they've got? Sure. I'll fly out of here in, uh, let's see, an hour. All right, in the meantime, I'll start cross-checking the classified ad. Good. Now, Butler ought to be going into action any day now. If you can find the right one, we might be able to arrange a reception committee. How about it, Tony? Find anything yet? Yeah, Jim. No? One same ad has always appeared before each of the Butler gang robberies. Oh, how soon before uh, well, no particular period. Once it was eight days, once as low as three. Uh-huh. What issues are these? The last month, since the Valley City job. Well, maybe I can start at the other end and work down. Hey, or... hey, here it is. Where? This one, under personals. Uh, the GC and CY. Yeah, that must be uh, Gene Crawford and Charlie York. Must be. Class reunion this year will be held at Sheridan Falls. If unable to attend, please wire school principal, R.B. Now, that means the girl must be traveling with one of them and doesn't have to be notified. Let's see the date on this paper. Uh, 19th. This Tuesday. Let's call the police at Sheridan Falls, Tony. Yeah, right. As soon as we warn them, let's get down there ourselves. I'm sorry about it. This phone is taken. How did they do that? Are those the same ones? No, 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 I'm sure. I'm sure it was. Yes, yes, of course. All right. Yes, as soon as we can. Right. Thanks very much. Order. Oh, we're too late, Tony. All right. Butler and his mob robbed a bank here ten minutes ago. After we warned them? The police set up a trap for them, but they shot their way out. The chief said he just doesn't have the manpower for a job like that. Well, did they wing Butler or any of the mob? Oh, clean getaway, so checking hospitals is odd. Oh, if those plane schedules were different, we'd have been on time. All we can do now is subscribe to the Chronicle and wait for the next day. Wait a minute. The robbery was only ten minutes ago. Oh, what about it? They're probably still in town. Come on, Tony, we've still got a chance. That must be Gene. Let him in. Okay. You know, Roy, today was the first time I shot a gun in ten years. Scared me half to death. Well, I'm kind of surprised at you, Gene, being late for a payoff. I stopped and celebrated with a couple of drinks. To celebrate or get up your nerve? What kind of a crack is that? 
You need whiskey courage to stick us up. Huh? Don't reach. What is this? Go ahead, Doris. Frisk it. Right. Doris told me about your little plan. Why, you dirty double crossing. Well, I never little... said I was going along. Guess this just ain't a good day for stick ups. You know what happens now, don't you, Gene? I blow my piece of today's job. Suppose you didn't. You gotta be alive to spend money. The... Grab that pair, Tony. Right here. The cop. Get that gun, but uh, you're all under arrest. All right, Tony, let's get him to headquarters. <laughs> Roy Butler, Charlie York, Doris Wells, and Gene Crawford were all tried for violation of the federal bank robbery statute. Each received a sentence of 25 years. Special agents Taylor and Guthrie located the hideout in Sheridan Falls of Roy Butler and his gang by checking at the express office. There they learned the address to which Charlie York's trunk had been delivered. Tonight's case told you the story of one of the 89 banks robbed in the last year. That number was once much greater. During the early 30s, the total of bank holdups in the country climbed past the 600 mark. Then in 1934, Congress enacted the first of a series of laws giving your FBI jurisdiction over virtually every bank theft. Since then, the number has decreased until, as mentioned, the last year saw it drop to 89. That is an improvement, but your FBI is not yet satisfied and will not be until the total is reduced even further. Until, with your aid, it is reduced to zero. In just a moment, you will hear about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. But first, Another quick message from our Equitable Society representative on the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. You've heard all about this famous Equitable chart. Now why not give it a chance to do a job for you? It's easy to get, and there are absolutely no strings attached. It's truly free. Just phone your Equitable representative and tell him you want the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Revised to meet the recent changes in Social Security. Or send a postcard care of this radio station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. File number 295. Its subject, Subversive Activities. Its title, Communist Agent. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacy Harris. Others in the cast were Harley Bear, Bill Conrad, Ed Gargan, Lamont Johnson, Charlotte Lawrence, and Roland Winter. This Is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production and directed by Sid Goodwin. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Communist agent on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. There's fun for the whole family when Ozzie and Harriet come your way next. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.